Hello everyone, it's Edgar Johnson from the IR Gurus here. Today I'm going to be giving a series of videos, and this is the first of that series of videos focusing on integrations with Microsoft and uh, Curate Our Suite. So today we're looking at the Azure Sentinel for IBM SOAR integration. And so let's just take a look at some of the key features here. One, you're going to be able to escalate uh, Microsoft Sentinel incidents to IBM Resilient SOAR cases. You can automatically keep the two synchronized. You can also retrieve all uh, Sentinel incident entities and add those as artifacts to a case. All comments will be uh, synced. And also there's editable templates for field mapping between the two systems. So uh, this video will kind of go in depth. We'll go over uh, a bit of Microsoft permissions because that's going to be the key to getting this integration working. So right here, I'll give you a brief. You should see some of the different signal incidents that I have with suspicious authentication activity. And then we should be able to go through some of the setups here and layouts that you can create so that you can see uh, the proper information. So without further ado, let's start within the IBM App Store here. But as your signal, you should be able to hit this download button. You should be able to download a file, right? Within that file, you'll then navigate in Curator Suite to application settings, you'll jump into case management, and you'll jump into permissions and access. Within permission and uh, access, you'll be able to access your suite of apps. And from here, you should be able to install the app. So just select that file that was downloaded from the IBM App Exchange. I won't go through that because I've already performed those steps, but you can see those uh, perspective steps done here. So once the integration is successfully installed, then we'll, we'll go from here. So once you get here, I won't jump into configuration yet uh, until we set it up properly on the Microsoft side. So let's jump into our Microsoft side. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create an application registration. So you need to navigate to Active Directory in Azure. So Azure Active Directory, jump into your app registrations, and then from here, create a new registration. Now, I've already created the proper registration here. So I care more about the perspective permissions that, that you have here. So the API permissions are the important part here. Uh, so from adding permissions, you're going to want a couple of them. You're going to want service management, user impersonation. From the log analytics API, you're going to want data read and delegate an application. From the graph API, you're going to want read and write all to security events. Also, you're going to want read all for threat indicators and user.read. Then from here, you're going to look at Microsoft Threat Protection. You want incident.readall, incident.writeall, read write all. This is really important because we automatically sync cases uh, to, to soar incidents. So signal incidents come over as curate our suite uh, cases. So in order for this to be effective, we're going to need these permissions. So go through this list. Make sure you have all the right permissions. You do not need the Defender ATP permissions. I will be doing a series on that integration soon, and these are the permissions you need for that. But until that point, for Azure Signal, you need threat protection, the graph permissions you see here, log analytics and service management over here. So once you create an app, you have to then grant those permissions. So you do need, uh, you know, root level access or admin level access to grant uh, permissions for that specific registration. Generally at an organization, what I recommend you do is you create a service ticket to your infrastructure team or whoever manages your Azure and you let them take care of uh, these permissions and you tell them to just watch this first half of the video. So this is just creating the app, with the proper permissions. There's something else that you got to do here. So under here, you need to go to the actual subscription that you're looking for. So within my subscriptions, I navigate to Azure subscriptions. I navigate to identity and access management. And then from here, you need to add the proper role assignment to the app. So first you need the right API permissions, but you also need the proper role assignments. So from here, I've already added the proper role assignments to my app. 
So if I type in Signal, you'll see Microsoft Signal Reader. I am going to go through very briefly just how to do that. What you want to do is you want to add a role assignment here. And so within roles, you want to type in Signal Reader. And I don't know if that'll fit. So Signal Reader right here. And so you want to put that here. Actually do Reader and Responder. So Reader and Responder both would be great roles uh, for Azure Signal here. So from there, you want to go, you want to review and after you select uh, one second here. So next, after that, go to select members. From select members, select the API or the app registration name that you just created. So if it was Signal, then it will be right in here. You would select Signal. And then from there, you can hit select. And then next, and then assign those permissions. So Signal Reader and Signal Responder, both excellent permissions for the app. And that's in accordance with the documentation here. So if we're following that def documentation, then we should assign Sentinel Responder. I always like to do Sentinel Reader uh, and Responder here. So I look at both of them for this application. So once you hit that, you can review and assign, and then you should be good. You should have the proper permissions there. Uh, from that standpoint, you wanna navigate into the app that you just installed here, and you wanna come to your configuration settings. So I'm gonna show you um, an easy way to generate all this information. So within your API permissions here, if you go to certificates and secrets, you should have your certificates and secrets here. Uh, if you don't have it, then generate it again. You're gonna need the value of the secret. This is super important. Do not get the ID and put that in. Uh, that won't work. You need the value here. So put the value here, and that's gonna correspond with your app secret here. Then for your client ID here, what you can do is go to the overview, and you see your client ID, in your tenant ID. You need both of these to go into your app configuration. So you need your client ID and your tenant ID both right here. The polling look back is super important. If this is your first time installing the integrations, you may want to import previous signal incidents uh, into the platform. And you may do that to run playbooks retroactively from IBM SOAR, but it's really important that if you, if you want to do this, then you select the look back time in minutes here, and it'll go and it'll look back on that and it'll add all of those relevant incidents here. For Signal Profiles, mine's is uh, Swiver LLC. And then you need your subscription ID, your workspace name, uh, and your resource group name here. So I'm gonna show you how to get all of this uh, relatively um, eas easily. So if you go to signal and actually i'll go to the actual app you'll see this selected workspace as their signal demo that should correspond directly with my workspace name next you're going to need the subscription id you can find that information back in subscription so if you really go to the search bar and you just type in subscriptions and you access your subscriptions, you should be able to see the subscription ID. So that should cover that. And then you're gonna need your resource group name. So my resource group is Demo Assets. And I believe once again, you can see that in the actual Microsoft Signal. So if you see your resource group Demo Assets right here, then you can see that right within here. So all of this information, like I said, is needed for you uh, to be able to get the correct information, right? And so, of course, you can limit the number of max alerts per signal incident, and then also you can set new incident filters here. So a bunch of cool things that you can really do here. Uh, I set verify equal to false here as well. So uh, ignoring the certificate uh, there so that I can just access that signal API. So verify equal pros, uh, false. My Signal Profiles, you're going to see Swiver LLC here. So 
actually, if you see under Microsoft Signal, that Swiver LLC is my fictitious organization. So make sure that you put that there uh, for your Signal profile. So that is the last piece of information that goes um, within here. And then make sure that you uncomment this line out, that this is uncommented. You have your uh, profile within here and you input all of this information incorrectly. One key tidbit to troubleshooting this app, I like to set my log level equal to debug. So at that point, my log level being equal to debug allows me to do some good logging. This is really useful in this app because once you deploy, so you save and push changes, you deploy, and then you're gonna wanna be able to download logs and if you're, you don't have the right permission set, you'll get a 401 error. And that means that you probably need to go back and make sure that you followed every single step. And that means setting the Azure Signal Responder and Reader Role and all the other things. So uh, ignore that. Uh, but generally, you can download the logs, get into here, and then see everything that you're looking to see here. So... If you don't specify a start and end date, then it'll just pull uh, the entire log uh, up to the latest uh, entry. So I do this as well. So like I said, this is optional. Uh, if you need help troubleshooting this at all or doing any information, then uh, post in the comments here. But once you configure this, there's one more thing that you need to do. So you need to go into your customization settings here. And I'm going to show you guys how to create the Azure Signal layout. So I would create a new layout called Azure Signal. And I'll say yes. So within there, I then go to Azure Signal and I, I get access to all my fields. So I would just search and see all these signal fields here. I wanna create my own you know, label. And I can make this tab visible based on uh, signal incident ID, because we know every signal incident is gonna have its own respective uh, incident ID here. So one second, let me go through and just put all this information here. And so then what you also want to do is you want to add the incident incident alerts in here. These two data tables are really important. So the alerts and the entities. So these are all the informations that you got to add here on your source side. So then you hit save. And so I'll show you some cool. I'll refresh. And actually... If I go look at this information or the signal incident here, you'll notice that there's a new tab here, right? So this Azure Signal tab. And with here in here is all the signal uh, incident information. And so here are all uh, pretty much the alert name, the description, the status, the severity, the tactics, um, the compromised entity, and most of these have already been added to an artifacts and the potential remediation steps within here. So that'll be really good. Here are all the entities. You can add each and every entity um, to a case if you want to. That's done actually automatically within our integration. So once you have all this information structured the way you want, you've officially set up the integration. Uh, what you can do is you can come in here. This is a hyperlink. So if you click, it'll actually take you right to the incident so this is that incident within azure signal uh for the most part that is how you set up the integration a quick overview of the permissions again because we see that's where the most people mess up in in setting up this integration so i'm just going to go to the api permissions make sure you have this one this one the graph and the threat protection make sure you have all of these up to here then from there in your subscriptions you're actually gonna go through and 
click in here you're gonna go to your I am make sure you assign the right role to the resource so remember if I go to add a role assignment and then the role I want is signal responder so oh, one sec I think I need to go to page four of that. So make sure that you set the Microsoft uh, Signal Reader and Responder roles. Assign both of those here. And so that's going to be crucial. So these are the two permissions. Hit there. Next. Review and assign. Oh, excuse me. Members. Select your members. Select Signal, which is going to be whatever the name of your application registration, that's what goes in here when you select your members. Select, so you're going to assign that. Hit Next, and then hit Review and Assign, and then you can see. So this sign already exists. It failed. So it's already assigned for me. But the Signal Reader and Responder permissions, you want to have tied to that Manage Identity and that App Registration. Also, remember the hierarchy in Azure. So this is just a really quick, quick Google understanding of it that, you know, organizations truly use subscriptions in Azure to manage costs. Under that are the resource groups. Under the resource groups are the actual resources and different workspaces and different things. So that's just for good thought, kind of how uh, permissions work there. So we make sure that our resource has the right permissions and then we also assign uh, subscription level permissions and identities as well here. And so that's how you'll set up the Azure integration. Like I said, uh, you'll know uh, if you download the log, you'll actually be able to see Stomp connected. And like I said, turn log level to debug if you wanna uh, do any you know, information sharing or you wanna do any debugging or testing with the integration. and. Uh, this is the setup video, so thank you all for your time, and hopefully this is helpful.